nurture and support begins in three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome back to Nurture and Support, episode number two. I'm Kelly Tool at K E L L Y T H U L on Twitter, and uh, a co-host with me today, as always, is number second time, I guess, as always, whatever, <laughs> is <laughs> Melissa. Hi everybody, it's Melissa. I'm at Karmic9 on Twitter, and it is great to be back for episode two. More adventures to come. Yes. I was just looking at it because, you know, put in hours and hours of preparation for uh, doing these, and I just realized that probably for the first several shows, I'm actually going to have a book recommendation in, like, <laughs> each of the first three. Uh-oh. And, and, and this one doesn't even have, well, it has a occasionally a, a picture or two but it's a it's a more of a word book you know the one with the you got a, lots of words things so words are good yep. and so why don't we just go ahead and get started on that um, I am going to start with a book recommendation today and to remind anyone new to the uh, the podcast well this is basically an opportunity for Melissa and I to share discoveries they may be new they may be old we may know about them we may not just things we found were kind of cool since the internet's kind of a big place and uh, say, hey, this is kind of cool. You might want to try it out. And we certainly hope as this keeps going, we hear from you and you offer some up to us as well so that we can uh, share those as well. But my discovery is a zombie book, a zombie series. Uh, it's called Day by Day Armageddon by J.L. Bourne, B-O-U-R-N-E. Are you familiar with that, Melissa? I have seen it, but it's it's one of the few zombie books I haven't checked out yet. So I'm I'm excited for your recommendation. So in 2012, he released the third edition or the third uh, the third book, um, and I think this is going to wrap it up. So I think it was a trilogy, but the first book was called Day by Day Armageddon. The second book was called Day by Day Armageddon Beyond Exile. And then in 2012, the day-by-day -day Armageddon Shattered Hourglass is the third one there. So I'm recommending the whole series. Uh, it def they definitely build, so you're going to want to start with one. A mm -hmm. lot of the packaging, sometimes you'll get them both together now uh, in a softback, or if you're doing it uh, electronically, probably some of the same deal. But interestingly enough, it, it has some uh, common themes to some of our other uh, items we enjoy. So Mel turned me on to the We're Alive podcast some time back, and that features a main character who has military background. The main character in Day by Day Armageddon has military background. The author of, um, or the, the writer of We're Alive is, actually has a military background. The writer of this book actually has a military background. So, wow. so there's, there's some of that, but it's, the kind of cool thing about it is it's written entirely in diary format. So it isn't a narrative through the thing. It's just you're reading, you know, day by day what mm -hmm. uh, what his particular entries would be. So it's a single point of view. Um, and then when he gets um, at some point in the in the first book in some duress, there's a fairly large gap. Uh, and then he comes back and he gives you the backstory of what happened and why he hasn't done an entry in a while. Uh, but it is a uh, it's a page turner. <laughs> it is a a lot of uh, a lot of um, a lot of good tension. It was surprised in that format how how well he can can frame it out. And then occasionally it'll be oh, and we found this map, and they'll have a drawing of the map. Or mm -hmm. if he was on the in you know on the road and couldn't uh, type it out, it's more of a handwritten type of thing and those types of things. But it is um, it is a really good. They're all they're all really good. They're they're uh, pretty quick reads, but mostly because you get really pulled into the story. Right. Uh, and it does run kind of along the idea of he's, it starts off at the beginning, he's near the base or on base housing when all this stuff starts to go for crap. And uh, then it's the process of what he gets initially to store and his, and he kind of covers in detail. This is what how I prepared, which I thought was pretty interesting. And these are the things I felt were necessary. And they go through a whole series of things and mm -hmm. break into a nuclear silo uh, to a missile silo to try and hang out there for a while. And that has some 
interesting aspects to it. But radiation or zombies? Uh, <laughs> more bad people. Yeah. <laughs> it was, the other people figure out they're in there and kind of say, you know, I think we want to be in there instead yeah. of you. <laughs> and so, so just like a lot of the the other zombie work that's out there, you've got that. Is it? Is it? The you know sickness and illness that's going to get you is it the people that are walking around that want to eat your brain that'll get you or right. is it the other people who are trying to get an edge one way or another? Um, that's what I love about zombie books. Just way into zombies. All of you out there will will find that out. Yeah. <laughs> that so if you, I would put it in your in your rotation there somewhere, and you'll get a really good good taste if you just start with that day by day Armageddon to begin mm -hmm. with. You start going through the first couple of chapters of that, you're going to know fairly quickly if uh, if this is going to lock you in. My hunch is it will. It's a, so it's a, it's a fun and a good one. Yeah, I didn't realize it was um, in that format, or I would have looked into it earlier. It's been in my list. I know Amazon recommends it to me. Um, I just haven't haven't gotten to it yet. I actually might have the first book um, on my Kindle. I just haven't read it yet. So that's cool. I will cool. I will get to that. That's a good one. Sooner that's rather fun. than later. Absolutely. So and I guess maybe it's because the chapters tend to be short. This you know we <laughs> kind of covered already my book challenge. Maybe this is why it works for me. Is like I could do little bursts and I go oh I'm tired and I can stop. But uh, uh, it's good. I really really enjoy it. And I, I just this got recommended to me by a coworker and um, who knew I was a big Walking Dead fan and all that. Mm -hmm. And he loaned me his first two, he had the first two copies, and I just cruised through it really fast. And he just dropped by with the most recent one. So I was like, wow, that's a good reminder and a good one to do for this show. So Yeah. So Day by Day Armageddon by J.L. Bourne, B-O-U-R-N-E. Highly recommend. All I'll books. be checking it out for sure. And then we'll move off of um, uh, the book world and move into the app world here a little bit. And as again, in those hours and hours of preparation, it's <laughs> I start to think through which ones to talk about or not. Even though I have personal feelings about iPhone versus Android and all that, I kind of figure it'd be good for the show whenever possible to pick something that cuts across both platforms, or if not, at least acknowledge it and, and do that. So th this one that I'm going to talk about today does. It's, my understanding is it runs on about everything. Yes. Um, and so, sure. so that's an enjoyable thing. Uh, so it's pretty cool uh, on that. So my recommendation on here, and this is one that we've actually had. Uh, I, I did actually this recommendation through Twitter, at least shared the link out initially, and and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that because Mel's Mel's picked up on already, and it's called Tiny Death Star. Price right, free. <laughs> the best app you can get is a free app. Apparently available on the iPad, the iPhone, Android platform, anything you could imagine. So, so regardless of your platform, you can go out and get Tiny Death Star. Uh, I know sometimes, like all the Angry Birds stuff, I've always been able to get for free on the Android platform where mm -hmm. there's a fee over on the iOS side if I was going to put it on my iPad or something. This one... Looks like I put it on the on my iPad, and so this one looks like it's free on all platforms. So yeah, I've got and, it on uh, my iPad, and and it was free, but you know they want you to pay for some of the the specials, but um, it's it's a challenge. Because it is, and so the game, and we'll, we'll uh, talk about it because you're kind of enjoying it. I'm I'm picking up from some of the tweets I've seen. Mm -hmm. it, so. it has kind of eaten my life the last few days. Um, yes, so we have you to blame for recommending this to me, and I've gotten nothing done for the last few days. But they keep working when you're gone. <laughs> they so they do. And then they, yes, then they, they throw up these little alerts telling you, oh, we're out of stuff. You need to come over here before we call Lord Vader. Yes. And so it's it's kind of done in a, you know, 8-bit eight, eight kind of look in terms of the characters. They're kind of on the cute side, but they're all the characters you know and love that appear to be showing up. So you're building the Death Star basically level by level, uh, in in the process, working closely with your uh, your employers, Lord Vader and the Emperor. So you get a little a lot of face time with Lord Vader and the Emperor, uh, and uh, you you do various tasks and you open new floors and you stock them and you sell things. And what are the um, the pop the populations called something again? They they citizens. Citizens. There you. You go. Yes. Um, so you get you get citizens that you can kind of align, and they have what their dream job is, and you want to try and get them to their 
their dream thing. And then they have basically uh, the Star Wars Facebook platform running so that Which you can. is adorable. Because you go back to it and you get to see all these little posts like, oh, I'm working in the cantina. I hate the cantina. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. so that's pretty fun. But uh, it's yes. a good, you know, it's, you got to work an elevator. You got to pick your floors, do a little strategy on how you're staffing things. And it's just fun little Star Wars things. And, you, and of course, it's built, as many of these are, to say, hey, you know, if you want to shoot us, uh, some money you can move along quicker in that, yes. but uh, I'm gonna kind of stay the free route and <laughs> just. Keep well, running. I will admit they they apparently have a a different sale I think every day in the little in the little store where they do a little bundle because of course they have imperial bucks which are your your special um your special currency that helps you build things faster and then you also get credits. But they'll have a bundle where sometimes they'll give you something useful with all that for the cheap, cheap deal of four ninety nine. And I will admit that I did buy that because I do love the game, so I was going to give it a little bit of money. But I really wanted a faster elevator, and when I happened to look, they had a bundle with a faster elevator, so I I paid my four ninety nine. But that that's all I'm going to pay for. Yeah, I swear. Maybe. I I didn't realize there were like daily specials, so I might have to probably go um, check those out. And yeah. That level of investment one time, I could do that. I did because I I've gotten 4.99 worth of fun out of this game, so I was willing to give it to give it that. So that there you go. I I paid for my part, and I I will not pay for anything else. I I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how you're so many levels ahead of me. That and I, I kind of get distracted. I started for a while, and then I got uh, away and come back. To all it. I've really used from it are my uh, is the elevator, which elevator upgrades do increase um, the amount of money you get for transporting people to different levels. For if any if any of you out there have played Tiny Tower, this is basically Tiny Tower only Star Wars version. Um, I didn't really play Tiny Tower, so there might be some principles of the game that I'm missing, but I am a micromanager at heart, and pretty much every micromanager sim out there in the world I've played, and so this one has eaten my soul. I'm ready to be a Sith Lord. In a good way, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So those are those are mine. I do have. Um, I'll, I'll keep in my pocket here. We'll see how how the this show goes. And the point of which we ever say, "Ooh, we still have a minute or two to kill." Sometime I do have an unrecommendation that I'll throw out at some point. But I'll <laughs> I'll just you know I'll keep that. We'll, I'll keep that uh, ready uh, when the time is right. So so that's what I've got for this uh, for this episode. Uh, Mel, what do you have? But those were both excellent recommendations. Um, I've got. A podcast and a book, only they're both sort of books because the podcast is of a book and we have talked about this before, but um, Underwood and Flinch, which the third book has recently started on Halloween, um, but it is a book series by Mike Bennett. He started it as a podcast, so it is free whether you get it from Podio Books or you can download the podcast off of iTunes or um, whatever your your podcast feeder of choice is. But um, the original the original podcast is just called Underwood and Flinch, but he has since moved it. When you look on iTunes for it, it is under a feed that's just Mike Bennett Podcast, and he has published the books and split them into two different books from the original podcast. Did, did you listen to the first ones, Kelly? Yeah, and so I would okay. view Tiny Death Star as payback to you for yeah. the time that you gobbled up uh, in, in my life for me to, uh, with that recommendation, yeah. starting to go through Underwood and Flinch, because okay. uh, I had done none of it. Um, there were, and these are big, beefy, half-hour to 45-minute episodes. Good ones, really good. Yeah. Uh, but it was... Oh, let's do it on my way in from work. Oh, let's do it on my way back from work. I'll do it when yes. I'm mowing. <laughs> you know, so, um, uh, yeah, I have listened to it. And I actually have listened to, uh, while mowing today, I listened to the uh, the uh, first episode. The of first the new, one of the new. Third book. Yeah. 
Um, the new series is called Blood and Smoke, but you really do need to go back and start from the beginning. What it is, since I haven't told you what Underwood and Flinch is about, um, Underwood is a vampire, and Flinch is his minion. And um, it's a little rough to start out with, but it's a traditional, traditional vampire story. Underwood is neither a really good guy or a really bad guy. He definitely does not sparkle. The sex part though is entirely, you know, possible. He he does like the ladies. He does like to party. But he's been asleep for a really long time. And he left behind a family of flinches who are his keepers. And they have built up this big cult um, where they kind of worship the Lord Underwood. So he gets woken up, and then all sorts of fun things happen. And you just have to listen to going back to the very first stories and listen all the way through. Um, but it is Mike Bennett Podcast, and it's called Underwood and Flinch, which he broke it up into two books called Resurrection. And then the second book is Bonded in Blood, if you would prefer to read the story. But it's really one of the best produced podcasts um, I've listened to and he did it all himself I, I've always held that podcast up in very high regard as to how good the sound quality was couldn't agree more I mean it's, and it's it's different in that um, I mean this is this is straight up I'm reading you the book uh, it's it's inflection and, mm -hmm. and it's everything there but uh, it's not you know tons of sound effects and everything it's basically storytelling um, right. and uh, and he does he does it and he does all the voices which you know <laughs> is my, has remained my my kind of one quibble with it. Uh, it it's not even really a quibble it's just a moment I was let the least comfortable I've been in listening to the whole thing <laughs> is when he's engaging in dialogue with himself as the main protagonist and his sultry German girlfriend <laughs> yes the, there's a little the, yeah. yeah, his little... his German girl is not is not of the bestest quality, um, but luckily for all of us, she's only in the very first few episodes, I think, um, and then we never we never talk to her again. Well, but, I, just, um, I had forgotten. Just he's got. I mean, he's how much I just simply enjoy hearing this guy talk, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so he's just got a great voice and a wonderful way of delivering. And his yeah. regular cadence appears to be pretty darn close to the vampire's <laughs> cadence. I mean, he kind of poshes up the vampire a little bit, but he is British, um, so of course, for us Americans, that always sounds so much cooler. But uh, I really thought this new, uh, the new episode. I thought the sound quality was even better than the previous ones. And I thought it was kind of cool because for this one, I mean, that seemed like the you know he had kind of left it open about, oh, I'm going to probably come back and do something again after you mm -hmm. listened to the first two you were hoping you would. But then you didn't know if he was going to do prequel stuff or whatever because this is a vampire's had a long, long history and he could have gone yeah. pretty much anywhere he wanted to. And and uh, it sounds like he's kind of getting the best of both worlds. He's keeping... Right, yeah, he's kind of going somewhere in between, which I thought, I thought was a, a nice way to um, satisfy everybody's, what everybody wanted to know. So I highly recommend that. I don't want to spoil the story for you because there's a lot of things to spoil, but it is more of a traditional vampire story. Um, you don't have to worry about teenage vampires in high school, uh, things like that. If you like traditional vampires, then I think that you'll really enjoy Underwood and Flinch. He is a really good character. Yep, and I think the only spoiler it's, it's fair to share is he remains 100% sparkle free yes. uh, through the entire. He, well, he likes maybe sparkly diamonds and stuff, and and sparkly girls, but he would never dare sparkle himself. Yes. Ever, ever, ever at all. So that's my first recommendation this episode. Um, please check it out, and especially as it's free. All of these these people put all this hard work into writing these books, which I would love to be able to do. And um, and then they put it out there to the world for free. It's amazing. Uh, my second one 
is, of course, another book. I'm sorry, and I swear next episode I won't do a book. But this one is not only vampires, but it's also zombies. If you've ever wondered what would happen if a zombie bit a vampire, this is the book for you. It is called Double Dead by Chuck Wendig, and it's actually the first book. Um, I guess you can call it a series. There's a second book, which is kind of more of a novella, that's called Bad Blood, but it's the story of a vampire named Coburn who wakes up after the zombie apocalypse has hit the earth, and um, he wakes up in the rubble of a building. He was attacked by some um, do-gooder vampire killers and they collapsed a building on top of him and he's been injured and in one of those little vampire comas healing himself for quite a while and he wakes up and the city is completely overrun by zombies now he's just a regular guy he doesn't know what all these zombies are and he inadvertently gets mobbed and bitten by one of them so then you have to wonder what happens when a zombie gets vampire blood, this is more of the, the traditional vampirism where it's passed on through the blood. So we've got a zombie that's gotten a mouthful of vampire blood. He barely gets away. Um, and then what do you do? What, what do you do when you're a vampire and you're in the zombie apocalypse and there are not a lot of humans left alive? What are you going to eat? This is the, the conundrum that faces... Coburn and he ends up finding himself having to protect a band of humans that he finds because he's got nothing else to eat so he has to fight the zombies to keep this little herd of bleeders alive for himself and are these uh, are these self-aware bleeders do they know that they're being protected by the vampire yes. to feed the vampire? They do. Yes, they have to make a deal. If anyone's not familiar with Chuck Wendig, you can find his website at terribleminds.com. He has a particular writing style. This is one of his, his older books. I think it might be one of the first books he ever put out. He has a particular writing style that is very kind of in your face. It's very gruff. Um, if you're easily offended, then... He might not be the best the best person for you to read. All of his writing is full of a lot of languages, but it, a lot of language, but it's primarily just deals with cut and dry sort of situations. There's there's not a lot of finesse to it. Um, his characters don't beat around the bush. If there's bad things that need to be done, they're going to jump out there and they're going to do it. And he doesn't worry about trying to nice any of this up for the humans that he comes across. It's, I'll protect you, but you're going to feed me. Obviously, he doesn't have to kill them. He just feeds on them. And uh, they're in a little RV, and they're trying to get across the country. And he does ha he can't be out in the daylight, so he does have to sleep during the day. And they're all in an RV traveling across the country. And you come across all of the major players in a zombie apocalypse. You're cannibals. But we've got these mutant zombies now who've been exposed to vampire blood. And what horrors this will entail. So there's a particular little girl that he takes a liking to. Um, and that's what From the story is about. From a digestive point of view? Or <laughs> more he can't really decide. He can't uh, really decide. Torn. He just doesn't know. So um, that's the point of the story is they're, they, he starts out in New York, and they're trying to get to California because there's supposed to be a cure for all of this, or this little girl holds the cure, they think, for... Um, killing the zombies or protecting people from becoming zombies, etc. and so forth. And they make this deal with him to ensure that they survive to get to California to save the world. So it puts a monster in the position of having to protect the savior of the world. And um, I, always, I thought it was well done. I love Chuck Wendick's work. He's got a lot of books out there. Um, 
that I think a lot of people would like, and he doesn't get a lot of credit for him. But he's put uh, out... No, is he really saving the world, or is he just keeping McDonald's open? <laughs> as far as he's concerned, he's just getting a meal. Um, this is just a means to an end for him. He's just protecting these people and sort of keeping them happy, because that was the deal that they made. And in the end, of course, you know, it's about the redemption of this this monster vampire and why he's the way that he is. Because there's a mystery all in there that I don't want to spoil for anyone. And more of it is dealt with in the follow-up called Bad Blood. But like I said, it's more of a novella. It's not, I don't, it's not a full-length novel. And I think people would enjoy it because I always wondered what would happen if we if we've got vampires and you know zombies aren't that difficult and if we have zombies then why don't the two meet and what would happen if a zombie bit a vampire so this kind of covers both both sides of that equation and it goes of, both ways you know he yeah. finds that he can't eat zombies because zombies are dead so zombies can't nourish him in any way shape or form so he has to protect the small group of humans that are left from the zombie horde, or he'll have nothing to eat. And there's a dog. There's a puppy, which always makes me happy when there's a puppy in the story. So, of the two vampire leads <laughs> in your <laughs> recommendations, Lord Underwood versus is it Conrad or um, Coburn. 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 They um, are they are exact opposites of the vampire spectrum. Lord Underwood Underwood is all debonair and refined and sophisticated. He's Lord Underwood. Coburn is trash. He's a he's a murdering monster, and he he doesn't care about anybody. Um, he doesn't even really particularly pretend to be human anymore. Um, he doesn't want to be human anymore. And that's kind of what the story is about, bringing him back to some sort of humanity through trying to save this these people, which it's just a, it's just a deal for food for him. So that's why I like them, because they're, they're at opposite ends of the spectrum of what vampires can be, either pure monster or, you know, the ones that everybody go, oh... You're so pretty, Lord Underwood. Cool. Those and are, and Lord are Underwood good. does, you know, try to get some action here and again. Yeah, he seems to... And he has some unfair advantages in that, I believe. <laughs> the, he, he does with those traditional people. vampire powers. Yeah, so... Awesome. But uh, there's my, my creature feature for the week. Excellent. So check out Mike Bennett podcast, which you can find, I didn't mention, you can find Underwood and Flinch's website at, of course, underwoodandflinch.com. But Mike Bennett has several different websites, but that's the one directly for Underwood and Flinch. And you can find all of Chuck Wendig's books at his website, terribleminds.com. And, then and that's all I've got. Cool. Good stuff. Um, yeah, and as we keep rolling on this, what we're going to try and do is we work out the logistics of getting the, the podcast up on iTunes, getting them on the site, all that, uh, nurtureandsupport.net. We'll try and include these links, kind of connect them to the episodes, however it makes the most sense, so that if you're like, oh, yeah, that's good, you'll have a place you can go back to and fairly easily find any reference stuff that we can point to you on on these, on these uh, things. So, Right. Um, so, again, with that ample pre preparation before we started recording this, I told him, I'm all set, I got a timer, we're good. I didn't really know how to operate the timer, <laughs> and it stopped. I turned, <laughs> I turned mine on. We're right at 30 minutes. Oh, there you go. Good. Well, that means I, uh, we people will continue to wait for my non-recommendation for yet another episode. So, we'll do that. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoyed uh, this episode. We'll see you on the next episode. This is Kelly signing off. This is Mel. And we'll see you for episode three of Nurture and Support. Nurturing and supporting terminated.